right now. Every power, every gathering that will gather against today's summit, wherever they are, wherever they are, Lord, we release fire. 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 Because you said we shall be created and it shall be established right now. Every power that was stand against our blessings, Lord Almighty, because you are here, because your presence with us right now, we release fire upon their domain. We release fire upon the authority. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rabbi Sutton Batalaba Sindelikandarabo. Malikentalabo Sindelikata. Lord, every power that will come to hinder that word, the word that will bless your people, the word that will elevate your people, the word that will bring people closer to you. Right now. Right now. Oh Lord, may your angel of your presence scatter them. May the angel of the Lord arise and fight and scatter them. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus. Father, have your way. Lord, have your way, Lord Jesus. Let all powers go unto you. Let all the glory go unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's be your holy name. We are going to pray for the man of God right now. <clears throat> Every word that will comes out of his mouth is not his word. But let those words go out, go into every heart, every heart of stone. Let that word become a flame of fire and melt everything and convince the heart of men to believe more and to walk more holy into the world of let that word that will go out of melt every heart, melt everything that is not of God in our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, we pray right now, oh Lord, the word that you are going to use your servant to pray right now, Lord Almighty, let those words proceed out, oh Lord, for your glory, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, my God and my Father, those words, they will become yours, so you will not be the one to speak, but the Holy Spirit we speak to him. The Holy Spirit will speak to him. The Holy Spirit will speak to him. The Holy Spirit will speak to him. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, oh Lord, use those your word. Bring more deliverance. Bring more healings. Bring more testimonies. For your glory. For your glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are going to pray more prayer point to go. We are going to today is the first day of Holy Communion. There is blessings that follows with Holy Communion. We are going to ask our Father those blessings that used to follow with Holy Communion. Let it locate everyone that is going to participate. Any power that will hinder those blessings, let the Holy Communion approach, sanctify our spirit mind for more glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our Father, our Lord, we pray. Lord, as we partake in the blood of Christ and his flesh right now, those blessings, those blessings that follow through the communion, Lord Almighty, release those blessings upon your children. Release those blessings upon your people. Let your presence, oh Lord, manifest like never before. In the mighty name of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let those wine, the blood, the blood of Jesus that you are going to partake this afternoon, oh let it wash away everything that the Lord has not planted in the heart of the children, in the life of the children of God. Lord Almighty, let the blood of Jesus sanctify our inner mind, sanctify our soul, sanctify our spirit, sanctify our body for your glory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We worship you in Tana Rock of Ages. Lord, as this service opens, we open it by you, Jesus Christ, that you will be king. Sit on the throne. Manifest your power. Use your servant. Those that will listen to those what he will preach, Lord Almighty, visit and bless us and make us to grow more for your way. Give us the spirit of humility. Give us the nature of Jesus, the character of Jesus. That is all we want. Lord Almighty, please, we want to love you more. Not because of the things you are going to do, but because of whom you are. Plant your love in our marrows. Plant your love in our soul. Plant your love in our spirit. Lord Jesus, we want more of you. More of Have you. your way in our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the, the choir is ready. Let us, everybody, mute uh, our mics, but the choir, only the choir. As I said, the choir can unmute their mics as we worship in Jesus' name. You are welcome to worship, uh, but let it be in the background when you have muted your mic. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let the anointing 
praise master Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You once again, in the mighty name of Jesus, and for those who joined later, peace be unto you all, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The peace Amen. that passes understanding. Masula kayama tandelebo. Masindala. Hallelujah. Those who roam might endure for the night. Joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to get our announcement. Announcement. Announcement for the weekly activities for Rapture Ready End Time Movement. From Monday, there is Holy Ghost Night Vigil, Holy Ghost Fire Night Vigil from 1 a.m. Nigerian time. On Wednesday, there is Bible study questions and answer from 7 p.m. Nigerian time. On Thursdays, there is charismatic hour, intercessory prayers, 7 p.m. Nigerian time. On Fridays, there is Holy Ghost Fire Night Vigil, 1 a.m. Nigerian time. On Saturday, there is Facebook Live Ministration with our brother Anaile Thier Dozier on his Facebook timeline, Anaile Silventus Thier Dozier, 7.30 p.m. Nigerian time. Uh, on uh, Sundays, Sundays we have worship service from 1 p.m. Nigerian time. And uh, every last Sunday of every month, there is communion service, just like we are we are having today, because today is the last Sunday of the month. We are going to have the communion service by 7 p.m. in the evening. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, that was the announcement for the weekly activities. Uh, when we are going to have, when it's time for offering, uh, we will do as normal, the normal procedure. The, uh, the information is going to be posted on the chat, on the chat where, how to go about the tithe and offering. Praise Master Jesus. Um, a little bit about the ministry, Rapture Ready End Time Movement, because I see there are some that are joining for the first time. Masuka Tali Brahma Sandele. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are mighty. Okay, okay. Let's see. Um, about Rapture Ready End Time Movement, a little bit of it. Let us hear what is REM, REM, Rapture Ready End Time Movement. Praise Master Jesus. Rapture Ready End Time Movement is an end time ministry heavenly mandated to win many more souls before the coming of our Lord Jesus and to preach undiluted holiness word with the power of God through the divine revelations of Anaile Chedeuzier. Anaile Chedeuzier is the general coordinator of this ministry. Uh, he's an uh, end time revivalist sent by the Lord Jesus with divine heavenly messages of uh, as the Lord Jesus confirmed his ministration and crusade with signs and wonders through the prophetic word of knowledge. Praise Master Jesus. Uh, the ministry or the movement has uh, different chapters. There is chapter in Ghana, in South Africa, and in Germany by the grace of God. And it's also spreading around the world to win many more souls before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This ministry or this movement, it has a camp project. Camp project, praise Master Jesus. It is a project where um, deliverance will be taking place, where there will be deliverance, crusades, and the conferences will be held to the glory of our Lord Jesus to win many more souls in the mighty name of Jesus. So you are welcome to support this camp project with your financial donations and support. As we achieve this vision, so many can be set free from the evil of the last days. The ministry accounts or the project accounts can be posted in the chat group by the brother, brother Godwin, in the mighty name of Jesus. That was a little 
that was a little bit of the ministry or the movement rapture ready end time movement praise master jesus rapture ready end time movement jesus is coming soon rapture ready End time movement, Jesus is coming soon. Rapture ready. End time movement, Jesus is coming soon. Rapture ready. End time movement, Jesus is coming. Master Jesus is a, a, a movement that is preparing the souls for the coming of our Lord Jesus. We are here to prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus, to prepare our body, our spirit, and soul. Hallelujah. 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 And the goal for this ministry, according to the coordinator, is to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, we are going to, let me see, to get some, um, is it, uh, let me see, testimonies before, before the Bible reading, Bible reading, testimonies before Bible reading, praise Master Jesus. Is there anyone who has testimony? You can raise up your hand. You can raise up your hand. Hallelujah. You can raise up your hands before we proceed. Hallelujah. Sister Mabel, Mabel Smith, you are welcome. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can unmute your mic. You are welcome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for today. I thank God for every member of the room and I thank our families. I thank God for the I joined this member. Um I give glory to God for my life, mostly for my life and for the life of my children, because it started. Prayer with two members in the room. I've seen God's hand to me, things changing in my life. I thank God for the I'm going now in the Lord. I'm not going on my way anymore. I'm not directing myself. I always tell God to take control, keep me and guide me. At least for last week, I could do evangelism on my own, but people. They come back, they give testimony, they say that the way you're speaking to us, there is God, and I thank God for that. And uh, last week we had a prayers um, in the night. When we are doing prayer, I have a little shot. We are doing prayer. So I pray. When the arrow shot, shot me, like needle, like back, the first one was heavy. So do I start shaking my body, shake the arrow back to the center in the name of Jesus. And they shot that one to the other side. I thought it so, I said, God, more than you people. No matter the battle I'm fighting in my life, God has been fighting battle for me, not me. I've been seeing challenges God has been doing, but the greatest of us I did remember the battle is not heavy like you anymore. Uh, and I call the God of Abraham, the God, my God has the prayer, my house we are in now, and thank God for good things he's doing in my A lot has happened. I don't know, a lot happens, but I give God in the ways of the Lord, and I God give more grace to not depart from his face, from his work, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for 
Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you all in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Is there any other testifier in the house before we proceed with our program? You are welcome to testify to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I see Sister Peace. Sister Peace, you are welcome. You can unmute your mic. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I really want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. You know, I, I took a decision last two years. I, wa I was actually, something used to happen to me then last two years when I was, um, when I left Nigerian to my uh, God country. I used to see myself in a dream. It's like it's like a, a confusion everywhere. Everybody were dying, crying for help. So from, when I woke up from this dream, I like I used to ask myself, what is the meaning of this dream? I don't understand it. It happened to me several times. I don't understand the meaning of the dream. I would just ignore it. So suddenly I I come across Sister Kara on, uh, on her testimony about how she gave her life to Christ, how she preached that we should take off, we should try to live a holy life. And some of the scriptures she gave in the Bible, which I went through. After I reading those scriptures, I said, yes, it's really true. So all these things is in the Bible, which I don't know for a long time. So then I decided that I will not put on trousers anymore. I will not... Um, make my air anymore. I told that was my decision at the first place. But when I take that decision, it was not easy for me. It was not really easy. But at the end, I was unable to stand on the decision because of the way people talk to me. Everywhere I go, they was like, oh, look at the way you look like. You look like an old woman. I'll go to my friend and say, oh, when you're dressing like this, the way you dress in this country is somehow, why are you dressing like this? Why are you covering your body like this? I was like confused within myself. I said, God, which one is the main decision? Am I making a mistake? They would tell me, look at you, you're not married. I look at the way you're presenting yourself. How will a man see you? At the end of it, I was not strong enough for my decision. I backslide. I go back on those things, which I decided not to go back again. But after some time, it was not even up to one year or two years that I go back to it. I started being uncomfortable within myself. Whenever I put on earrings, whenever I put on earrings, my left ear is always inching me. I was like, what is this? I don't feel all this before when I was back home in Nigeria because I'm the type that when I was back home in Nigeria, I put on very long earrings and big earrings. I said, why is it that my ears is inching me? Even though I pierced another ear, like two. When I pierced it, the very first I put on earring on that ear, I could not see. And I removed it up to today. I never put on earring on the second ear, which I pierced. But the one they pierced for me when I was born, the left ear, whenever I wear earring, it's always a problem. I don't sleep at night. I said, God, I just shifted it to God in prayer. I said, God, anything in my body, anything that I wear, in my body that does not glorify your name that should make them uncomfortable for me make it uncomfortable on me so that after that prayer i keep on praying it i keep on praying that prayer that thing keep on happening to me and i used to wear indian hair because here i'm working i work in a salon i wear indian hair i use a lot of money to buy indian hair and whenever i put on this indian hair i don't sleep it's like there's a fire on my head so I, I said, maybe this is the sign that God is giving to me. Maybe this is the sign. My father would tell me, it's not. It's just like you are not used. Uh, you keep on inking, inking. Why are you different? But when I feel hair, I don't feel this inking. Why are you the only one feeling the inking? I said, I don't know. I've never felt anything like this ever since I've been facing weave on. But whenever I took off this weave on, I would get myself. 
I said, ah, this is a sign. This is the sign of my prayers. I said, no, I will not do it. I will not do those things again. I leave. I quit putting attachments. The ones I bought, I quit everything. I throw everything. And my earrings, I throw everything. Ever since I saw that earring and uh, weave on, I have found peace within my body. I really want to thank God. And ever since I joined this uh, realm, and that was when I go across uh, Brother Chido's on Facebook, ever since I joined this fellowship, it has been a help to me. I know those I don't join once, I don't, I'm not always on, on the meeting all the time, but I still want to thank God that the little I have learned here has really helped me to hold on to that word. And I keep on praying for the grace of God to continue so that I will hold on forever. That is my testimony. Amen. 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 God bless you. Rapture you ready. And time will Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister. Sir. Sister. Sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, Amen. I have a testimony to make. Amen. 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 Yeah. My name uh, is Michelle. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm also in um, the, uh, Eloza. The Eloza. Uh, not to cut you. Um, because of time, oui. please oui. Be, uh, be brief. Be brief. Yes. Be brief because of time. God bless okay. you. Amen. Okay. God bless you. I have to need to make uh before five minutes, I I have a problem of my document everything of my life. I the sister who who chose me to to this meeting is sister Richards. I may I think she's done me now. But uh, Network. Some on days you got that sister. Hello, sister Shilo. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. We can't hear you. Just Hello. that your your network is breaking somehow. Ah, uh, kind of. So I met you, and you told me about. To surrender my life to Christ and the, everything I'm doing, God will we free my sin and for me. Uh, and that that month I didn't get myself and everything about it. That thing is in. The the problem I have. My I still I still request that document again. The legit everything change. I request they they keep my 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 by the side. me. They just wait after, after some days, after some week. I go back to the dream. We are somebody want to kill me. Is, is that me? It looks like not, not uh, in the dream. It looks like physical. We are, I see somebody, only in head and in hand, trying to kill me. By by the grace of God, I escaped on it. Still in uh, the office, they they will sign my document and everything. And they say that we, they're looking for me still they did not see me. I say ah, I still my my phone number is there. Why why will not call me? I say okay. They they bring my document. Want to 
design everything and take, in, take the, the, the picture and everything. Yeah. They do not see it. They told me, me come back again next, next two week, which is I do. The day I go in there, they have the, the problem again. My document disappear again. I still asking God why. Those two times, almost three times, I document decided this, this, this did not see it. They find it did not see it. The last day, we, the last day I say I will not talk about this document again, and I will not pay it. I will not pay it, this document to ask God to do it or not. I will just leave it. God, if you if you want me to have this document, I I leave it in your hand. Do for me. If you don't want it for me, I know that. Praise the Lord. I know serving the living God. That's right. Which is, which is, is I go back again. Network is very bad. Rapture ready and time. Jesus, they told me I can wait. Place which is I praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His network is very bad. His network is very bad. But I believe he wanted to testify for the document that the Lord granted him. Uh, by the grace of God, I um, I think he might type the um, the testimony either in the Skype group or here when he's back to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because of time, I don't think there is more uh, time for testimony, but if you have any testimony, you can put it there. You can type it down uh, as we proceed to, to our program. Uh, it's going to be now... 10 minutes reading Bible by Sister Pascaline. Pascaline, you are welcome in Jesus' name. You see your microphone is muted, please. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. A Bible reading for the day is taken from Genesis 3 and Matthew 3. I read Genesis 3. Genesis 3. Is there? If we have our Bibles, can we open the Bible so that we can see and read along? Genesis Chapter 3, I read. Amen. Now the servant was more subtle than any of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took off the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walk in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves.
from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Amen. Um, Godwin, over to you. On Matthew. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I read uh, Matthew chapter 3, start from 1 to the end. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judah, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Elijah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the ways of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his remnant of camel's hair, and a lady gathered about his lions, and his meat was looked up and white honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judah, and all the religion around about Judah, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees came to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore the fruit, the fruit, the fruit meat for this repentance. And think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to ourselves, to our fathers. For I say unto you that God is able to these stones to rise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is led unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which beareth not fruit which beareth not for the good fruit, is thrown down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoe I am not worthy to, to bear. 
He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly pluck his flock and gather his wheat unto the garden, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then come Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for that, for that it becometh us to be fulfilled all righteousness. Then he suffered him, and, John, and Jesus, when he, had, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. Upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. At the grace of God. Uh, let us welcome our brother and I like Jesus here to feed us with the word of God, with the bread of life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. It's, uh, it's a privilege to be with us and um, I count it as a blessing. And um, be in our presence today, and, uh, and I know that God is going to bless us. I, I for the um, for the testimony that was very wonderful from the three persons and the last person that was sharing. I know we're not able because of the network, uh, but God sees your testimony, and uh, in heaven it has been certified that that brother testified on the 28th of May, and it has been written. And then definitely, I believe he would overcome in the mind of in the mind name of Jesus Christ. And then Amen. also, I must commend the choir. <laughs> that was very wonderful, you know. Uh, I think it's because of the choir, they make me not to sing again. Um, if I want to sing and I look at the choir, I say, wow, um, that was very great. And which means I have to meet up to a very high level of their tone, you know. Um, they can't get you all and then, uh, may God help us to keep on singing to God's glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I will bless you for your mercy, Lord. We're about to look into your word. Help us to see Jesus, Lord. Uh, help us to become more like you and press on to perfection. Um, Lord God Almighty, let the world be able to wash us, let it purify us, let it sanctify us, and let it make us whole, Lord, and let it remove all the rubbish inside of us in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, um, <clears throat> we'll be looking at something, you know, um, but it's the life of one brother. Uh, that has so much blessed the Christian race, and uh, I'm believing we'll have many people like him on the surface of the earth. Uh, and why did God give us his brother? You know, so that you won't say, "Ah, oh, Jesus is too big. I can't meet up to his standard." So if you can't meet up to Jesus' standard, you you can meet up to this brother's standard. You know, and uh, his brother Paul. Um, one of my favorite apostles. <clears throat> we look at something with regards to evangelism, like we looked at yesterday. And um, we want to look at some scripture. Why was it that the Lord was speaking to him? And uh, why, why was it that Paul was always hearing God's voice, you know, um, speak to him and talk to him? There is something about Brother Paul. And uh, the way God treated Paul is the same way God can treat you and I if we change our motive <clears throat> and if we ensure we have a right understanding. Let me tell you this simple truth. You can work for the Lord and your motive is wrong. 
You can be working for the Lord, be preaching, be doing all the insurance, be raising dead people and all the rest. But if your motive is wrong, you won't get to heaven. You can also work for the Lord and because your motive is right, <laughs> but you make some little bit of mistakes, you get to heaven. What do I mean? The reasons why you do it hmm, is what really matters in heaven. <clears throat> and that's the big screen that will be open for each and every one of us. So it will be open for me also, Chidos. Yeah. The Lord will look at the reasons why I do the things that I do. So I'm just ensuring so that I believe that um, we are walking this way of holiness. And um, I'm, I'm very happy. I know that many of us are growing in the Lord by the grace of God. <clears throat> and we are growing and we are becoming smaller every day. Okay? God is going to help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, I think I'll say this here also because I'm live so that um, for those that also might be watching and all the rest, some persons have been asking, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I say it again. I'm not saying it again to prove anything, but I'm saying just to correct some persons because of the wrong perspective. So I shouldn't allow somebody to stumble because of some certain things. Um, some persons have been asking, what was this mark here? You know, I keep on saying that that's 16 years ago. Um, that's a very big accident. And then, <clears throat> so it's not a sign. It's not like, uh, <laughs> it's not like a sign. Like, it's not like a fashion. <laughs> It's not like I'm, I, I, I like it, but um, there was a way I can remove it, but I'll remove it, but <clears throat> it's, it's permanent. So, so for some asking, is it that Chedoze is doing some signs or something like that? No, that's not. It's far away from that. Uh, <clears throat> so it's, it's a mark there. And maybe God allowed it there so that people will be able to differentiate between I and the other people that look like me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go to the word of God. Um, let's go to Acts 18. Acts 18. Um, um, Acts 18, 9 to 12. Uh, as I was reading this scripture, I was asking myself, Lord, why Paul? Why, why do you speak to Paul this way? Uh, it says here, then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. By vision. He says, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Look at what the Lord is saying to Paul. Hold not thy peace, just speak. Don't be afraid, just speak, just speak. And he says here, um, verse 10, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Let me give you this. No man can kill you. No man can take your life. No man can torment you except it has been given by the Lord to do so to you. What I mean is if you're a true child of God, the steps of the righteous are always marked up. So what it means is that I cannot leave this earth until God says it is time. As long as you are working to God's plan and purpose for your life. <clears throat> Let's look at something here. He says, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hold thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm surprised. How many of us will travel to Nigeria from Europe? And, you know, the Lord is going to say something like, oh, something like, let's say, oh, bro, maybe, bro, God, means you know, travel, that he is in a particular place. Oh, brother. I want you to stay there for one year um, to preach the word. I don't know. Some persons might feel, you know, <laughs> was it something that appeared from the village um, to hurt me? Or uh, it's just like you traveled, you just traveled for a vacation to a particular place and you now hear the voice say, I want you to stay here for a year and six months. When we read the scripture, let's, let's put it to our life. That's practical discipleship. Or I go to a particular place and the Lord says, Chenose, you have to stay. And you have plans, you have your kids um, in another environment. You have other things you know that you ought to do. But the Lord said, oh, I want you to stay here for six months. For I have a lot of brethren and I have a lot of people there. And if you read this scripture, one thing should surprise you. I did not see Apostle Paul arguing with the Lord. Look at this. 
And he continued there a year and six months and teaching the word of God. And when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought judgment and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. Now I know why Paul was a brother. He was a wonderful brother. <clears throat> He didn't have any other will but to do the will of the Father. Now we're talking about evangelism. If you're a child of God, if truly you say you are a child of God, if truly I say I am going to heaven, if truly I say, oh, we preach holiness and all the rest because it's not in mere words, it's in character. If truly I say these things and the Holy Spirit is not able to speak to me and tell me, change those you have to reach out to some souls here. Yeah? You have to preach here. Yeah? And you have to do this here. Yeah? You have to share this article here. Yeah? You have to create this site here yeah? so that souls will be blessed. You have to do this. And the Holy Spirit is not able to speak to you and I to make impact into the kingdom. There is a comma in your Christian life. There is just a comma there. And there is a problem there. Don't say to yourself that it's just one particular set of people that have to preach the word. Everybody. If you read the Bible in Mark 16, 15, everybody, everybody has been given this power and this authority, according to Matthew 28, has been given this power and this authority to preach the word. This was why Paul had a very wonderful calling. He always listened to the voice of the Lord. Before God will speak to you and I, like the way he spoke to brother Paul, my mind must not be set on the things of this world anymore. That's why God could speak to Brother Paul, and Brother Paul could say, Yes, Lord, you want me to stay in India? Yes, Lord, you want me to stay in Jerusalem? Yes, Lord. And he stayed there for one year and six months. You know what it means? So maybe, for example, you have a family and you leave your family there, and the Lord says, Oh, I want you to do this and all the rest, which means you have to change all your families and all the rest. Let's say maybe Brother Paul, you know, he got a return ticket and he has a return ticket to return tomorrow. Let's let's make it practical and all the rest. And the boy put to him, Oh, now you have to do this. Brother Paul did not argue with the spirit of God. God, you know, I have some people there, I have a family there, I have a wife there, and I have some children there, and all the rest. This was why Paul was a special example. Look at Paul because he looks at Jesus. Follow Paul. Follow Paul. Paul said, follow me. Follow me as I follow Jesus. So you see, he's a perfect example. And I know that God will give us this grace like he gave to Brother Paul in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> And then, so what was this? Why was the Lord always telling Paul, bidding Paul to preach and all the rest? You know, many of us have lost our evangelism power and fire. There's no more body for souls inside of you, you know. Uh, maybe because we have become bigger. That's why I say it's bad to become bigger. When you become bigger, you forget about some certain things. But when you become smaller, you remember some certain things. Many of us have forgotten about, you know, the love we once had for the Lord before. You can't remember that fire that used to be inside of you. I want to preach. I want to preach. Oh, I want to share this. I want to do this and all the rest. But the fire, where's the fire? Where's the fire? Where's the fire in our life? Can't you remember that? Can't you remember? You always wanted to tell that your sister and that your brother and that one close to you and all the rest and tell them, oh, uh, have you given your life to Jesus? Jesus Christ is coming very much soon. Is it like that in our life? Paul never lose the grip. The, what, what surprised me about Paul is the more he grew older, is the more his love for Jesus grew, 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 is the more he was preaching the word. He's a big example for you and I to follow. And I'm looking at him because I saw Jesus inside of him. That's why I say if you see Jesus in any man, follow that man. If you don't see Jesus, <clears throat> please don't follow. And I know God is going to have his way in our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Where is that desire? Amen. Now we have a lot of freedom. You know, let me share this with us. Some few years back, um, some three years or, or so, it's not been long. I used to be locked. They used to padlock the house. <laughs> it's very funny. They padlock the house so that I don't go out to preach the word. 
<laughs> That's how my people do that. They padlock the house. They say it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and I begin to ask myself, and I'm struggling, Lord, what would I do here? So I'm like asking myself, should I break this place to go? If I break, <laughs> have I become like Jesus or did I behave like Jesus? Or if I break, which means if I disobeyed and all the rest, <clears throat> they try to break my megaphones to stop preaching the word. <laughs> Because they felt this brother, this channel is disgracing his family and all the rest. What is he shouting? And Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Doesn't he get tired? <laughs> and I'm asking myself, you know, and I told them, you know what? I don't do bad things like people and all the rest. I just desire to follow Jesus. What's the problem? And all the rest. Oh, they say you can't go out. They lock the gates. They don't lock the inner house. They lock the big gates, you know, the big gates. So you cannot pass through anymore at them. So if we have, we had brethren in Lagos where we used to go for a minute, they would just call me, Chinozi, what's happening? So they had to whisper, hope nobody's hearing us. They have to whisper, Chinozi, are you not coming out? Are you not coming out? I say, please pray. You know, people are around me and all the rest. I don't know how to come out right now. <laughs> that was how it used to be to go out. To go to church was a problem. <laughs> you go to Sunday church, you go to Sunday service. I, I cannot go to church. I, I cannot go to church. I don't know. I cannot go to church because I was stopped from going to church if I didn't go to the old religion. That was how I learned Christianity. I desired every moment to want to hold the megaphone and shout, Jesus is coming, but I didn't see it, you know? My brothers and sisters, is that zeal still there? And I thank God that, you know, from the time I got converted to you now, it's still like that. That same desire of preaching the word now, I thank God I'm a little bit free, you know. <laughs> Nobody holds me again and tells me, Jesus, you don't do that because um, <clears throat> then the only thing they can just hold me is, uh, we won't pay your school fees, we won't give you money, and we won't give you an um, I stayed months, you know, without receiving anything. There is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. You must watch out your Christian life when, when you have everything all around you. You have the internet all around you. You have everything to preach the word and you cannot preach the word. Many of these people you see that went through a lot for Jesus, they will rise up on the day of judgment and they will stand against many of us. They will stand up and say, oh, maybe Brother Paul will stand up. What excuse do you have not to preach the word? Look at me. I was traveling from places and he didn't have any private jets. What is stopping you from preaching the gospel? I don't know. You have hands. You have mouths. Okay, no problem. You don't have money, but you have hands to write a paper and write Jesus loves you and paste it all around and all the rest. If your desire is to please Jesus, the Holy Ghost will always speak to you every time. <clears throat> Tell you, my son, my daughter. Now, right now, I want you to go. I want you to go. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. God will align our life so that we can always preach the word at every point in time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's check out something in Acts 17. Um, Acts 17, verse 16. <clears throat> Look at this. He said, Now, why Paul waited for them at Athens? His spirit was steered in him. <laughs> look, look at that. Look at that scripture very well. Look at that scripture. Look at what he says here. He says, now, why Paul waited for them at Athens? His spirit was still in him. What do you get there? Paul was disturbed. He was saying, oh, Lord, I cannot take it anymore. I'm seeing a lot of people here that are still worshiping my doors. Lord, I cannot take it anymore. Look at the naked people all around me. Lord, I cannot take it anymore. Look at all these unbelievers all around me. Lord, do something. Lord, do something. I cannot take it anymore. That's how he boils. That's how he boils in somebody that has a testimony of Jesus inside of him. Your testimony is not complete except you reach out to other people. Your testimony is not complete except you're a true disciple. A true disciple of Jesus is one that follows the pattern of Jesus. What was Jesus doing all around? Going all around to preach the gospel, to preach the word. Is it like that in our life? Don't tell me you can't do that. You have people in your office. Don't tell me you can't do that. You have people around you, your neighbors. Don't tell me you can't. You have your boss. You have your guy, you know. I was in a particular um, firm uh, where I was doing some internship. And um, I knew that I had to preach to these people. One of the things before I left there, they said, one of the things, they said, oh, this brother, uh, because um, if we go to the bus where we are going back home, um, 
everybody sits down together, everybody pairs themselves. Um, boys, and you say, wow, thank God, this is the time to preach the word, you know? So when I see people like that together, and everybody, they are arranging themselves, and they are talking, just let's talk, and you want to disturb my ears. So the only thing I do is rise up and start preaching the word. Jesus is coming soon, you know? Jesus is coming soon. Are you people that are not and Many of them, they are like, this brother's coming, gay. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> I believe that's what happened to Paul. His eyes couldn't behold evil. If your eyes can't be all evil, then you preach the word. And you know, as I was doing that and all the rest, the driver would look back. He's preaching and all the rest. I kept on doing that every time. But when I left that place, the brethren, I realized that some of them were happy about what they had. If people will not forget you in life, it's not because of the billions of amounts of dollars you give to them. It's because of the word that you give to them that would save their soul from internal damnation. That's what's important. And that's why Apostle Paul can never be forgotten. Even if two million years comes, or if Jesus doesn't come, maybe in many, many donkey number of years, or if Jesus doesn't come, why? He stood by the word of God. Okay, let's, 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 let's look for that. Um, Acts 17, 16. He says... Um, and now why God went for them at Athens? The spirit was scared when he saw the city wholly given to idols or idolatry. Are you seeing that? Is it like that in your own life? Is it like that in your own personal life? Oh, you, you see people doing a lot of things and giving themselves to idolatry. This idolatry might not be. Idolatry is not only when somebody carries image and statue like the old religion. That's not only idolatry. When you see people putting love for something against the love of Jesus or love for Jesus, the love of money and the love of some certain things and all the rest. You preach. When you see people doing some certain business that is not the glory of God, but they are doing it, you know, because it's a viral business and all the rest. You speak. You preach. Let them say what they want to say. You preach. You speak the word and you tell them the word of God says this in this and this. You should not do this. Why many of us will not be persecuted for the gospel is <clears throat> because we preach when we are not supposed to preach. <clears throat> what I mean is that there is a perfect time in when the Holy Spirit wants you to reach out to some souls. And if you don't do that at that point in time when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you like Brother Paul, you won't be persecuted for the gospel. Don't worry. Even in a hundred years. Nobody's going to beat you. Nobody's going to fight you. But one of the reasons why they don't... Ask yourself, why is it that they don't stone people anymore for preaching the gospel like the days of Apostle Paul and all the rest? Though we see that in some Arab nations and all the rest. It's just one reason. It's just one reason. People just preach out of preaching sake. They don't listen to the voice. And they are not even following according to the pattern that Jesus has laid. So... Even if you preach and you preach not the message of the kingdom, nobody will stone you. But go outside and go and preach to some other people and tell them, repent. Repent from your sin. Point out their sin to them and tell them, Jesus wants you to stop this and all the rest. Let's see if some people will not stone you and abuse you. Is the desire there or the desire has gone down? You know, <clears throat> you have become older in the Lord. And so <laughs> the desire has gone down. It was not like before. Is the desire there or maybe because you feel that God has built your mansion for you at a point, and you're, you're like, oh, let me get relaxed. You can't get relaxed in this race. This race is a continuous process. Nobody has gotten there until we get there. I have not gotten there until I get there. That's how we must press on. That's how we must press on. Nobody gets there until he has gotten The greatest preacher in the surface of the earth or the greatest general of our sales, like we see, nobody, none of them has gotten there until you get there. <laughs> is it like that in our life? Apostle Paul is a better example. Let's go down. He says in verse 17, that's Acts 17, 17. Look at what he says there. He says, therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. What kind of human being is Paul? 
I don't know. Look at Paul. Let's say the market Paul went to is like the grocery stores and the shop and the supermarket. Can't you carry some truck and say, take and give it to them there? Is it going to remove anything from me or from you to do that? You know why? It's because many of us <clears throat> are not thinking like heavenly minded or heavenly minded Christians. Or it's because many of us, our, our eyes, our depression or our impression is not setting towards heaven. We are thinking about so many other things. So that's why the prompting cannot come in there. Whatsoever the Holy Spirit will speak to you is whatsoever sometimes you have always considered in your heart. The Holy Spirit remembers you. The Holy Spirit is not a magician. Don't think they do magic. <laughs> the Holy Spirit does not do magic. What you have put inside of you, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to you. That's why the Bible says he guides you. He remembers you into all truth. The things that you have forgotten will bring it back to you. If you have not taken something inside, the Holy Spirit will not bring it back to you. So don't think it's magic. It doesn't happen like magic. It's because somebody was thinking of evil. Then the devil now came there and said, oh, young man, why don't you shoot that person? Young man, why don't you commit this adultery? Why don't you do this and why don't you do that? There was something inside of you that desired that thing. And the devil spoke. It's the same way also for Christians. Is that desire still there to preach God's word? <clears throat> or you are losing grip of the Christian faith? Or you are losing grip. You know the funny thing? The funny thing is that one thing I must say is, please, don't deceive yourself. Because it's very easy to deceive yourself. It's very easy for me to deceive myself. <laughs> but truly, you know if you're deceiving yourself. But don't deceive yourself. Because many have ended up deceiving themselves. Thinking in a lie. Or thinking that they are spiritual. Or thinking that they have gotten it and still yet... There is a lot of emptiness. Don't be carried away by the crowd. Don't be carried away by what people say. Be carried away by what the Spirit of God brings to you on a daily basis, if you are still in the faith. I know that God is going to give us the grace to become more like him in Jesus Christ's name we pray. <clears throat> Look at this again. It says in verse 18, look at them. Um, about seven, seven, and from 17 to 18, it says, um, then, then certain philosophers of the um, Epicureans or Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Look at what they call Apostle Paul. I don't know. Is there a general idea that you call this useless man or something like that? I know what that man would do. First, you just lock those people in prison and all the rest. Why, why would you call me names? Because they are superstars now, so you can't call them names. So <laughs> They are big men. They are businessmen. You don't call a businessman or a superstar. You don't call him names. But they called Apostle Paul. They said, look at this babbler. <laughs> that's what they said to Apostle Paul. And that's what they will say to you and I and all the rest. <laughs> like some said, you know, maybe this sign. I'm just saying this to the brethren. I won't say this um, publicly and all the rest because let people say what they want to say. Um, so because of some certain things here, they say, well, maybe he puts some certain things there and I'm surprised and I'm asking myself. <laughs> but I'm not moved, you know, because it's normal. If they did that to Paul, there are things that they will do to you and all the rest. People will call you names. So if they have not called you names because of the preaching of the kingdom, which means we have not started preaching the word. Because as they did to them, they will do to us. Is the love there for evangelism? Is it still there? You don't need to do one special thing. You don't need to stand in a stadium. You don't need to be in a crusade. Who is asking for all that? Must everybody be there? Not everybody must be there. And it doesn't mean that those people are better than you. But the little place that God has kept you in, make some impact. Make some impact. Make some impact. Do something for the Lord. Go out and witness. Bring them to Jesus. You might not bring them to rapture at the end time movement. Bring them to Jesus. Let them know that there is a preacher here. The Bible says, how would they understand the word if there was no preacher? Let them know that there is somebody here preaching the word. Don't get to that level where it becomes a struggle. 
it will cost you something. It will cost you your time. It might cost you your energy. It might cost you your resources. But you will have great reward in the kingdom. Everybody will get to heaven, but not everybody will be in the same place in heaven. Hope you know. <laughs> everybody will get, many people will get to hell because it's a constant. You can't stop people from going to hell because people will go there. Let's not deceive ourselves. But another thing is that you cannot stop. Not everybody will be in the same degree of hellfire. Hellfire has different apartments. So we'll be in the place where the torment is. Not that the torment is not big everywhere, but there are different levels. Why? The Bible says that some will be giving more stripes than the other. What am I saying? If you have greater knowledge, it should usher you to greater wisdom to do something for the Lord. These messages that you keep on hearing, it's not for you to keep it to yourself. It's not for you to say to yourself, oh, I'm going to withhold this thing to myself. What would it profit you? Because the messages does not belong to Chedos here. The messages is the word from the word of God. So you act upon it and you do what God wants you to do. Is that fire for evangelism still in your bones? Is that fire for evangelism still in your bones? Is that fire for evangelism still in your bones? Like it was in Brother Paul. One of the reasons why we have a lot of false prophets, like I said yesterday, and we have a lot of false preachers, we will still have more of them. We will still have plenty of them. We will still have plenty and plenty and plenty of them. They will not stop because it's the Bible. I cannot pray over something that the Bible has said. <laughs> Who am I? Who am I to stop what Matthew 24 says? Who am I? I'm just an unworthy and unprofitable servant. So how can I stop it? But you know what? We can stop that plague from getting into the hearts of so many people by rising up and preaching. It's because there were no plenty of preachers. Or it's because that's why all these people were captivating and can captivate the hearts of people. Why? You didn't preach to that sister over there and she saw the first prophet and she met up with the first prophet and the first prophet told her this and that. Her blood is on top of your head because if you have preached, if you have ushered her to truth, if you have ushered her to a place where she will understand the word, possibly she wouldn't have thought prey of all these things. Or maybe you got a lot of converts. You're just giving birth to children. Let me tell you how giving birth to children is like. It's not hard to give birth to children. God is not after your giving birth to the children. God is after how well you take care of the children. I'm not talking about physical children. I'm talking about spiritual children. God is not after, have you heard Apostle Paul say something like, let's go back to the other place. Let's go back to this place. Let's go back to this place where, where we have gathered a lot of souls and all the rest. Some of those people that you have reached out to, have you gone back to see if, are they still in the faith? <laughs> or they are fly away? You just gave birth to children. But are you taking care of them like Brother Paul? And that's why, if you remember some of the workers, there are some certain things I told us to do and all the rest. Because it's very important. It's very important to follow the people, to know how they are doing well in the Lord, so that they don't fall prey of all these doctrines. Like I said, everywhere we go right now is power, 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 power. And I said power, 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 but no power to overcome sin. Is that the kind of evangelism that we are doing? Miracles, 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 miracles. But people are not getting into the kingdom. How is your evangelism life? How is your evangelism life, my brother? How is your evangelism life, my sister? Have you lost the fire? Or do you need to get the fire more? Or are you okay with the fire that you have? Are you contented? Because there are many Christians that are contented with, with the level that they are in. <clears throat> and I'm surprised. Even the great Apostle Paul or the brother Apostle Paul wasn't contented. Apostle Paul was in his 60s and he desired greatly to be like Jesus. And you'll be asking yourself, is it that this brother is not tired? 
You stayed how many years? 20 something years or 30 something years in the field. And look at him. And some of us, you know, we have stayed, you know, we have, we have not stayed long. And we are we're already, we're, we're already complaining. And the fire is already dying out. At least you should have stayed in fifth, maybe your 50 years and 20 years and 30 years. And maybe when something begins to happen, we know that oh, maybe this brother needs plenty of the fire. But you just started. The fire has to be plenty inside of your spirit, man. How many souls have you gotten? How many souls have you reached out to in the month of May? May is already ending. This May, you see, 2017 will not come back again and again and again. You must understand this, that every day that passes by will never come back again. It's not in the law of the kingdom for a day to come back. It goes. It keeps on going. It keeps on going because we are heading somewhere to eternity. Eternity is not that junction where nothing ends anymore. How would you stay in the month of May and you didn't make impact in the kingdom and you didn't bring souls to the kingdom? Let me give you one way you can do that. It's very easy. You don't need to be in one big place to preach and all the rest. <clears throat> share. Share handbills. Share tracts to people. Okay? Maybe you don't have money to do that. No problem. On Facebook, on WhatsApp, I don't mean messages that somebody has written. You write a message of a little bit of your testimony in Jesus and take that and share it to other people around. When you share it to them, watch out, ask them, wow, brother, how is your Christian life? Follow them up continually. Before you know it, you can call them up. It's not wrong. It's not wrong if you follow up somebody like that. At least two people that you can say, ah, these ones are my, my brothers I follow up. You must not be a preacher. You must not be a pastor. That's why I, I still... Let people to know that you must not put any name. You know, when people see that, oh, pastor this or um, prophet this or bishop this, they always have this feeling that these are the only people that can bring souls into the kingdom. Once you have been brought into the kingdom, it's expedient that you bring some others into the same kingdom that you came into. It was not angels. I don't know. Maybe angels came to some of us to preach the word. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how angels, it was not angels that came and began to preach, they used the Bible to, to save as many of our souls. It was not angels, and I don't think so. Or maybe it was Jesus that came down, maybe only a few people might have a little bit of that kind of experience and all the rest, but somebody brought you into the kingdom. How many are you bringing into that same kingdom? God is going to help us and give us that grace we need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Look at that again. Look at that. I will read in verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him and some said, what will this babbler say? Another psalm, and he seemed to be a set forth of strange gods. Look at what they said to our brother Paul. He says here, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Look at verse 19. And they took him and brought him unto a real pagos, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest. This is one thing I believe many Christians have not understood. Every time God is allowing you to pass through a tough time, maybe it's towards preaching the word, it's because of one reason. He wants to spread out the gospel. Whenever God allows you to encounter problems, maybe because you'll be preaching the word and they put you in some prison cells and all the rest. It's because of one thing. God knows the best way of spreading his word. Because of this thing that happened, Apostle was staring in his spirit. He went to preach the word and as he was preaching, something happened, they held him and before you know it, now he's coming before a large number of people to preach this same gospel. Why? Because he allowed the Holy Spirit to pass him through that fire. Many of us want to enjoy an evangelism, doing evangelism and all the rest. And uh, many of us want to be calm and, you know, we want to enjoy it. We, it must not favor you. It must cost you a lot of things. That's what the kingdom is all about. And if it doesn't cost you something, oh, then I'm sorry to say there is a big problem there. What's your desire? What's your desire? What's your desire? 
Are you still hungry? And all the rest. The truth about it is that when I see somebody write to me and mm, the person tells me something like, brother, I'm living in sin and all the rest. It, 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 something strikes me and I don't mind calling this person. Don't, you don't need to call me. Once I hear that the problem is your spiritual life, I will call you myself. I will try. I'll try my best to call you. But if I see that it's something else apart from the spiritual I might give it less attention and all the rest. Why? Because it's your soul that is much more important. It's where your soul is going to after this life. It's where your soul. Remember what I always say about the old covenant Christians and the new covenant Christians. Many, sorry to say if it might offend people, but it has to offend people. Many of the ministries we have today are old covenant ministries. Any ministry that sets its priority on the ethnic things is an old covenant kind of religion. Any ministry that sets its priority on heavenly things is a spirit-filled, mandated vision. This is one secret you must understand. So the emphasis, when Apostle Paul was preaching to these people, look at that. If you look at that verse, was the emphasis like, you're going to get healed and all the rest and miracles and all the rest. All these other things should come to bring the people more closer. So if the gift of the Lord inside of you is not even bringing people closer to him, you are a disgrace to the kingdom. If what God has given to you is not launching people closer to him and closer to his kingdom and helping them to perfect in holiness and to become more like him, there's a big problem. This is my desire. This is why I cry every day. That I want to get there. I'm jealous of these guys. I'm jealous of these brothers so much. Don't you see? I'm not jealous of Buhari or <laughs> these big presidents and um, Trump and all these people and Bill Gates and uh, maybe the big names that we have on the world. But I see people are following them so much and are jealous of them. <laughs> Lord, can you make me as rich as Bill Gates and all the rest? I don't want to be rich like Bill Gates, you know? People say there is a certain amount of money I don't want to have. I'm, I'm just telling the simple truth. God, don't give it to me. I just want the one that is okay for me and maybe I can do what I'm supposed to do and all the rest. Okay, it's cool. I don't want to be something. I don't want to be among the world riches. God, I'm saying it right now. Please don't help me to be there. I don't want to be there. I don't know. That's my own consecration. You can be among the world riches, you know? But I don't want to be there. Yeah, I don't want to be. I'm the 1,000 most richest people on the surface of the earth. I don't want. Please. You can take that and give it to all these other people. But what I want, if God can give me this one, to be like Jesus and to be like Paul, to be like these people that took the gospel far and wide, that must be your desire, my brothers. That must be your desire, my sisters. Nothing more. Nothing more. Nothing more. Nothing more. Let's look at something again. And um, you're going to see um, another thing here. Um, okay, um, a popular scripture. Let's go there to Mark. Um, Mark um, 16, 15. I want to I want to bring forth a revelational knowledge from here. Okay. Um, look at what the Bible says. And he said unto them, <clears throat> um, okay. Um, <clears throat> He says, and he said unto them, no, um, Acts 16, 15, <laughs> Acts 16, 15, okay. Um, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Look at that. Go ye into all the world. He say, go ye pastor into all the world. Um, go ye apostle into all the world. Go ye bishop into all the world. He says, just go ye. All of you, just go and preach the gospel. Evangelism. Is that fire still there? And there's this desire to want to bring souls. Okay, even if you can't do that, can you take plenty of your time to be praying for souls that are lost? I don't mean a religious way. You can be praying that and it's religious. This is a deeper Christian life. Understand why you are doing what you are doing. I tell the workers this also. Understand why you are doing that thing you are doing, maybe in rapture, day and time movement. Understand that thing. Because that's the main thing. 
That's what we keep you moving. That's why we sing a song. Keep me moving, keep me moving until Jesus comes. Keep us moving, keep us moving until Jesus comes. Keep us moving, keep us moving. Until Jesus comes, keep us moving, keep us moving. Until Jesus comes, keep us moving, keep us moving. Until Master comes, keep us moving, keep us moving. Until Jesus comes. One of the things that can keep you moving and keep us moving is to understand why you do the things you do for the kingdom. Follow Paul because he follows Jesus. And also follow Jesus because he looks up to the Father. And just like Paul, if you have gotten to a level also, you can say just like Paul. It's not pride. Don't say it is pride. It's not pride because you have gotten to a level. If you have gotten to a level in your Christian life because it's a ladder every one of us are climbing, you can also say, follow me as I follow Paul or follow me as I follow Jesus. But many people will be scared to say that possibly because they have not gotten to that level where they can say, follow me. But every Christian has to get to that level where you can also tell the brethren, follow me because I follow Jesus. Apostle Paul was not becoming proud. He was saying the truth from the bottom of his heart. God knows those that are serving him in truth and in spirit. Go out there right now and give them the fire that you have gotten. Go out there right now and preach to them. Do something for the Lord. Go out there. You can write some stuff and about your own testimony of Jesus. See, we were came by our own testimonies. Your own testimony has a strong you know, some people think, some people say, revelations, throw away those revelations away. We don't need those revelations. Throw away the revelation of the word of God. <laughs> you must have this understanding that <clears throat> everything you do, follow the word. The Bible tells you that we overcame by the words of our testimony. Your testimony is able to bring a lot of people to Jesus. If you don't know. Many people came to the Lord Jesus because of the testimony of Paul. Many people can also come to the Lord Jesus because of your own testimony. But one of the reasons why people might not share their testimony is because they are scared if they are still in the Lord or if they are not still in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> this is one thing that the Lord wants from you. Reach to many other souls. If you don't reach to them, a false prophet will hijack them. If you don't reach to them, <clears throat> if you don't reach out to them, a false preacher is going to hijack them. If you don't reach out to them, they are going to get another gospel. God wants you to do that. And we have created a lot of mediums where you can do that. It might not be something big. It might be by you sharing some stuff, sharing some articles, following up the people. It might be by you trying to act, oh, how is this person doing? And how is your Christian faith doing? And admonish them. It must not be big to do that. It might be by, you know, getting tracks and sharing to them. It might even be that you do that even through the website that we have right now. You can use that to evangelize and reach out to many. Because it's going to be a means whereby they will see and they will glorify the name of the Lord. This is the message that God has for each and every one of us today. And um, you must always ask yourself this question. When last? When last? When last did you buy some Bible? For some unconverted people, how much is Bible? But when last did you buy like two or three pairs of it and share it out? When last did you take those tracks and begin to share them out? When last did you do all those things? When last, when last did you preach to the sinners, you know? When last did you even give away? It might not be that, but there are little things you can do for the kingdom as a source of evangelism. When last did you give your clothes out? All those clothes that you are not using anymore. There are people that... They don't even have those clothes to wear. When last did you give all those things out? Look at your wardrobe. Are they not so much filled? Look at those your wardrobe for sisters, because I know sisters are people, they have plenty, you know. <laughs> they clock it. 
some way and all the rest. And but when last did you give all those things out and say, I'm gonna share this thing out to some other people? When last did you do all those things? When last did you share with other people of what you have? Or you're just keeping it to yourself? You are not greater than the Lord that says it is better to give than to receive. This is true Christianity. This is practical discipleship. And this is practical Christianity. Let this mind be in you, just as it was in Christ Jesus. And I know God will give us the grace to get to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. God will give us the grace to get to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give us the grace to follow Paul in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God will give us the grace for us to say to other people, follow me like I follow Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will come to that level by the grace of God. Let's bow down. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your children. Thank you for this message you've given to them, Lord. Let this simple message lead your children to freedom. Lord, let our love for you keep on increasing. Let it increase that we can bust out like Apostle Paul and say, and the Spirit of God has set me up to go forth and preach the word. Lord, open doors in our Christian life for us so that we can know you more. Let's no bed of the earth till this message from us, Lord. And for those that think that they are very spiritual, for those that think, oh, we have all the Bible knowledge in the world, humble them to come low like you. Lord, I do not pray that you bless them in, in all these materialistic things, but if you can bring them low like you, and if you can bring us low like you, that's a great miracle. It is a greater miracle than raising up the dead, Lord. It's a greater miracle than healing the blind. If you can help us to be like you. It's one of the best miracles we will experience in our life. What will it be, you know, if you heal our eyes, if you raise the dead for us, at the end, we lose the eternity. Help us. And if we have followed your word, all these other things will be granted unto us by the grace of God. There will be struggle for Getting documents, they only struggle for building houses, and they only struggle for marriage, and they only struggle from having cars and all the rest. It will be given up to us freely, Lord, because one thing is needful, and Mary has gotten it all. Let it be so in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe we are all blessed. The yeah. word. I believe our our spirit man has gained something and we are moving to another level to the glory of Amen. God. Amen. 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 We have come to a wonderful moment. A moment of uh, giving um, unto the Lord. A moment to to offer to the Lord um, the uh, ministry account can be posted by Brother Godwin and the uh, details how to go about the, um, the PayPal I will post it here by the grace of God uh, we are going to take like five minutes we shall play one song as we are doing the the tithe and offering. God bless us all as we give unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
stand on the on my pits. The brothers who stand on the Master Jesus, I believe we are all we are all done um, or finished up with the tithe and offering payment. We give glory to the Lord. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember, we are not offering to human beings, we are offering unto the Lord. And the Lord of blessing, the God of blessing, shall remember us in his kingdom, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm, let me see. Brother Godwin, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give us a closing prayer? Hmm? Okay. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, hello. Praise, uh, the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hello, praise Hello. Hello. I okay. cannot transfer the money to this account direct. I have to go like um, because the, I don't, I don't, I don't give me the e-bank. I've already paid the money into your PayPay account. I can always do it on PayPay. Okay, it's well, it's well. You can write it to me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Praise, praise the Lord. This is communion service, so um, I believe Brother Godwin can wait maybe before he close the service. Uh, yeah. Okay, I, I think a uh, man of God is still there. He has something to say about concerning the Holy Communion. Yeah, uh, we have done that actually in the announcement. We said it will be by 7 p.m. Well, he can maybe say something more about it if there is any other thing. Later. Okay, okay let's just do some prayers. There should be prayers. <laughs> okay, sorry, praise the Lord. Um, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, just um, before the prayers go on, um, just a little bit of announcement. Let's um, let's not forget. Um, by seven p.m. we we'll have the communion and service, and um, 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 so let's get. Um, we know what we are just supposed to get: the bread and uh, without yeast, and the the wine, pure, non-alcoholic, then you know, red wine. You know, and by seven p.m. we we'll, we we'll just comment that we don't intend to take time like. Up to just one hour, then we are, we are done with that by the grace of God. Okay, and for the workers, let's remember that our meeting will be 30 minutes after we dismiss, just um, a brief meeting, you know, for the workers. Um, okay, um, God bless also. Any other information, we'll get it on the Skype group. Okay, we can, you can continue with prayers, yeah. Brother Godwin? Brother Godwin, are you there? Brother Godwin, are you there? Okay, network, network. This way. This way. All right. Um, let us thank God for a powerful word. Let us appreciate God Almighty. A wonderful time in his presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Unmute your marks and start to thank God. Amen. Hello, God Almighty, we thank you. We appreciate you, my Lord, my God, for your love, for your word, O oh Lord, Lord, King of Kings, that sanctifies us, God Almighty, be the exalted and magnified in the mighty name of Jesus. Take all the glory, O oh Lord, because you are worthy. Take all the glory, O oh Lord, because you are worthy. We appreciate you once more again, O oh Lord God Almighty, for a wonderful moment in your presence, for your word, the bread of life for our souls. Lord, thank you for feeding us, O Lord, through your servants, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your word, Lord, we pray that your God, your word will be a fruitful growth in us, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful word. We pray that your word will continue to be in us. We pray, Lord, that your, your word will grow in us and bear fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the for the, our brother Anaile Chidusie. Let us pray that the Lord continue to anoint him, to strengthen him, to empower him for the work that he is doing. Let us commit him 
into the hands of the Almighty God. Father, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the life of your servants and Naili Chidizye. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you are using him to do in our lives. For the good sin, Lord God Almighty, for the blessings, Lord God Almighty, you are blessing us with through your word, O Jehovah, using your servant. We pray that you continue to anoint him, to strengthen him, empower him, O Lord, to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cover him with the blood of Jesus. We pray, O Lord God Almighty, for his ministry, his life, his physical life, O Jehovah. We pray that you bless him, bless him abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. May he decrease and you increase. May he become smaller, 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 and you become bigger, bigger, bigger in him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your word, Lord, your knowledge, your Lord, your wisdom, Lord, your understanding unto his life. In the mighty name of Jesus, some of your anointing and grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father Lord, you are worthy, you are mighty, we thank you, we worship you, we lift your name on high, we say be thou exalted and magnified in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful family. We pray, Lord, that you bless each and every one of us, oh Lord. We pray that you attend to our situation, oh Lord God Almighty. You know us better than we know ourselves, my Lord, my God, Jehovah, creator of heaven and earth, Master Tindole. We pray, Father, that you continue to send your angels to work hard, O Lord. Masulia Masandele for our lives, O Lord. Makusandele, Maikandoli Basandele. We pray that you help us, O Lord. To be rapture ready, rapture ready, rapture ready. Masu taliba kayendelem. That any winku Lord, any spot on our garment uh, that might hinder us to make it into rapture, may the fire of the Holy Ghost consume it. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, um, yeah. we end this meeting, Masu talia, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, for in Jesus' mighty name, we are blessed. Amen. 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 Let us Amen. share the grace. The grace, the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. Jesus. the love, love of, God of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. I love you with a deep, with a rich and pure love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Have a demonless Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Yes, you are the Lord. Do we have meeting today?